Jabot. Chip to right, tough play. Fraley extends and he makes the catch. And Fraley saves the shutout. On April 17th, the Reds beat the Rays to give them just their third loss in the first 17 games of the season. Unfortunately, only around 7,300 fans attended the game, making this the smallest crowd in the 20-year history of Great American Ballpark. The Reds entered the season with just a 1.7% chance of making the playoffs, so even a Rays team that began the season on a historic 13-0 streak couldn't alleviate the apathy of the Reds' fan base. Well, I guess the Reds just needed a winning streak of their own. Bash to right! His first game back! At the wall! Gone! It was overshot by Dubon! He roars home! Throw to the plate! Head first slide! Save! Between June 10th and June 23rd, the Reds embarked on a historic 12-game winning streak. By analyzing this streak in its entirety, we'll examine how the Reds have not only transformed their 2023 season, but their future as well. Let's see if Arenado has a green light with Contreras waiting behind him. He did! Green light! Swing! Drive! Belton left! It's 2 to nothing, St. Louis! On June 9th, the Reds lost 7-4 to a struggling Cardinals team ending the day six games under 500. While Red starter Ben Lively gave up five earned runs, he's actually been one of the team's better starters. An impressive feat given he hadn't thrown a major league pitch since 2019. A combination of injuries and poor performances is not only why Lively is in the rotation, it's why on June 9th, this group had the league's second worst ERA. A huge contrast to the bullpen. Thankfully, on June 10th, recently promoted starter and top 60 prospect Andrew Abbott pitched a great game, allowing no runs in five and two third innings pitched. Offensively, the Reds scored early, as in the second inning, catcher Luke Maley hit a bases clearing double. In addition, rookie first baseman Spencer Steer matched Maley with three RBIs of his own. Steer joined the Reds last year as part of the trade package for pitcher Tyler Malley, and he's been a key component to this team's success. Steer's ability to get on base and hit extra base hits has placed him with Corbin Carroll and Masataka Yoshida as the league's best hitting rookies. Also, Steer's elite speed and power combination allows him to be more versatile than the normal first baseman. Although, there's a different player on this team who's not only showcased his versatility, but has taken the spotlight for himself. Anderson knowing that if he got a job, it's going to This is Ellie De La Cruz, a rookie who in just a handful of games has not only become MLB's fastest player, but one of the game's most exciting players. Anticipation to see what- Oh, goodness! <laughs> This combination of elite exit velocity and speed is something rarely ever seen, and the addition of ridiculous arm strength is the cherry on top. Following this impressive run scoring effort, De La Cruz jokingly called himself the fastest man in the world, a statement he sought to prove the following day when he beat out a routine ground ball to first base. However, this wasn't De La Cruz's only showing of his elite abilities. Down one run in the third, he hit an RBI single to tie the game. A few innings later, once again down a run, De La Cruz easily stole second base and ended up scoring the tying run off a Tyler Stevenson bloop single. Then, in the eighth inning, this happened. Cruz to the plate, the throw, and he lost it! Contreras dropped the ball, De La Cruz scores! Just an all-around fantastic game for De La Cruz, but he wasn't the only player using his speed to beat the Cardinals. In five and one-third innings, starting pitcher Hunter Green got nine strikeouts, with five of them being on four-seam fastballs. Not only does he have the highest average fastball velocity among starting pitchers, no starting Starting pitcher in the StatCast era has thrown more pitches over 100 miles per hour. The combination of this incredible velocity and the numerous improvements he made following his rookie year earned the 23-year-old Green a six-year extension. Overall, the anomalies of Green and De La Cruz were key factors as to why the Reds won their series against the Cardinals. But it takes more than a couple elite talents for a team to succeed. 
After two straight wins, the Reds made the quick trip to Kansas City for a three-game series against the worst team in Missouri. The first game of the series was a back-and-forth affair, with both teams scoring in the ninth to take the game to extra innings. With the Reds scoring in the top of the tenth and limited options in the bullpen, Ricky Karcher was brought in for a save opportunity in his Major League debut. In the end, Karcher kept the runners in scoring position to earn his first career save. With this team, every win we have is exciting. It's been that way since April. All these wins for us are huge. Every game is competitive. A quote by center fielder TJ Friedel after the game. Speaking of Friedel, not only was he the one who scored the game-winning run, the following day he was the only red to reach base multiple times. Also, he took part in the team's five-run second inning, which gave the Reds a lead they never gave up. Now, this team is great at getting on base and hitting extra base hits, but their team OPS Plus and WRC Plus numbers both sit around the league average of 100 because their home ballpark is very hitter friendly. Fortunately, this Reds team has another trick up its sleeve. The Reds are one of only two teams with over 100 stolen bases, and according to Fangraphs' all-encompassing base running statistic known as BSR, the Reds are a top five base running team. Going back to TJ Friedel, not only is he one of the team's top base dealers and an all-around terrific player, he fits the player archetype the Reds have centered their rebuild around. When Reds GM Nick Kroll was promoted to the position in 2018, his number one goal was to bring more athleticism to the team. We've got to be better defenders, we've got to be better base runners, and it's going to be the biggest improvement we can make to our team. The decision to emphasize base running in the minor leagues has translated into big league success. In fact, the Reds are not only tied with the most players with at least 10 stolen bases, they legitimately could become just the third team in the 21st century with eight players totaling at least 10 stolen bases. Now, there's a name that isn't on this list, but fits the Reds' athlete archetype, Matt McLean. Despite only playing about half the season, McLean has been instrumental in the Reds' recent success, including this three-run home run that ensured the sweep of the Royals. Now on a five-game winning streak, the Reds had their first true test ahead of them, the Houston Astros. Game one was a pitcher's duel that was decided by a clutch home run from Tyler Stevenson and an RBI double from Kevin Newman. Also, rookie starter Andrew Abbott deserves lots of praise for shutting out this Astros lineup for six innings, becoming the first starter since 1893 to start a career with three consecutive scoreless starts of at least five innings pitched. Interestingly, Abbott didn't need strikeouts or overwhelming velocity to shut down this Astros lineup just a lot of flyouts. A notable trend of Abbott's rookie season thus far is his incredibly high fly ball rate and incredibly low ground ball rate. Now, I expect these abnormal trends to eventually regress, but it doesn't change the fact Abbott has been excellent since his call-up. Unfortunately, some of the Reds' young starters are injured, but with all these guys being around 25 years old or younger, this is a group that will grow together for years to come. One of these young starters, Hunter Green, was placed on the IL after holding the Astros to only two runs in six innings. A massive loss. But on the bright side, this Reds lineup is relentless, as displayed in their 10-run thrashing of the Astros. Now on a seven-game winning streak, the Reds had the opportunity to sweep the Astros in Houston, something that had not been done since the Orioles in June 2021. Well, the Astros proved why sweeping them is so difficult, as they took an early lead and held it through the sixth inning. Then, Ellie De La Cruz changed everything. That is a fair ball glove on a bounce foot race, head first line save! Oh, the outstanding speed of Ellie De La Cruz! Otherwise, fly ball, he could be within a run. Here's a fly ball, crank to left center! That is gone! And the Reds have rallied. It's tied at five. India in the air to right. Tucker going back. That ball's got carry. It's gone. And the Reds lead. The Reds came back from a three-run deficit to take the lead. But remember, these are still the Astros, and even the best bullpens can give up runs in the worst situations. Fortunately, they usually find ways out of these situations, too. Grounded sharply to third. Sends out. Second one. Drop down to third. 
bare hand. Bregman. Offline throw. Friedel hard collision. Senzel scores. Friedel's down. Rope to right field. Base hit. A rip around third. Friedel scores. De La Cruz goes. Pitch. Roll to second. Backhand. Only play at first. 2 2. Popped him up. Left side. Senzel. The Cincinnati Reds have swept the Astros. They have their longest winning streak in over a decade. If we've learned anything, it's that no lead is safe when facing the Reds. In fact, as of July 6th, they're the only team with a record over 500 when trailing on the road. So, considering the Reds swept the reigning champions, imagine what they could do against the second worst team in the National League. to right toward the corner and it is gone and the reds are on top five to three to first corner the fly and the cincinnati reds are riding their longest win streak in 66 years with this sweep of the rockies the reds not only had an 11 game winning streak they sat in first place in the national league central it was a hectic series with numerous moments where the Reds could have legitimately lost their streak, but someone always stepped up. One reason why this winning streak stayed alive for so long was due to the clutchness of not just a couple players, but from the entire team. WPA, or win probability added, quantifies the percent change in a team's chances of winning from one event to the next by measuring the importance of a plate appearance in the context of a game. For example, in Game 3 of the Rocky series, Ellie De La Cruz's 8th inning double had a WPA of 9% because the Reds' win expectancy increased from 57% to 66%. In 2023, the team with the most instances of a player having a game with a 10% WPA or better is the Reds. After De La Cruz's double, Jake Fraley hit a go-ahead home run resulting in a WPA shift of 27%. Hits with a WPA around 25% or higher are usually the deciding factors of games, so it makes sense why the Reds are near the top of the list. Overall, this team proves on a nightly basis they're ready to fight until the bitter end, and no game exemplified this more than their matchup against the Braves. Darno to right center field. Frito going back. He's at the wall, and it is gone! A five-run deficit against arguably the best team in baseball typically means game over. But for this Reds team, it was just another challenge. In the second inning, Ellie De La Cruz just missed a home run with his hardest hit ball of the season at 116.6 miles per hour, a speed that's only been reached by 14 players this season. The next batter, Jake Fraley, didn't hit the ball as hard, but it went over the fence to put the Reds on the board. One inning later, TJ Friedel showed off his base running prowess by stealing second and third. Although, it didn't really matter. Pitch. First pitch in the air to right. Acuna back at the wall. Just like that, the Reds were back in the game, until Matt Olson crushed an opposite field home run. Remember, a team like the Braves can't be taken lightly. But at this point, the same can be said about the Reds. Second and third, one out the pitch. Votto swings, high in the air, right field, yes! The entire Reds dugout 
is gathering. De La Cruz, right center. Down base hit. Could he go three? In the Iran third. India scores. It's a cycle. Ronald Acuna to left, and the ballpark will not hold it. Two solo homers, and that one was hammered. And now Matt Olson. And we got a one-run game and a one-handed catch by a Braves fan. The battle of the winning streaks had turned into an all-time slugfest. Still, with an 82% chance of winning heading into the ninth inning, Reds closer Alexis Diaz was ready to pitch. Not only did he enter this game with 20 saves in a row since the beginning of the season, he had saved six of the 11 wins in this streak. He's not a flamethrower, but he'll strike out anyone he faces. Although, this time around, he didn't need to. Tying run is on. Go ahead, run bats. Ground ball. McLean, second. 12 in a row. The oldest team in professional baseball has its fifth ever winning streak of a dozen straight. This game was a modern classic. In front of a sold-out crowd, the Reds accomplished their first 12-game winning streak since 1957. In a span of two weeks, their playoff odds dramatically increased and have continued to increase in the weeks since. However, this streak revealed that even at this team's peak, pitching upgrades are necessary for any chance at a playoff run. Although, this begs the question, should the Reds look to make these upgrades? Trading prospects for rental players is a strategy reserved for contenders. And pitching struggles aside, metrics like expected batting average, expected slugging percentage, and expected win-loss record show the offense is due for some regression. To me, this team is like the 2022 Orioles, a young, gritty team oozing with potential on the Major League roster and in the farm system, but still multiple pieces away from being a true contender. Now, the Reds being in a weaker division than the 2022 Orioles certainly helps their season outlook, but I still think it's best for them to stay cautious at the trade deadline. Regardless, the fact we're having a discussion about the Reds being potential buyers at the deadline shows how the perception of this team has changed from consistent losers to young, exciting winners. The rebuild isn't over quite yet, but at the very least, Reds fans have reason to be optimistic for the future. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.